Hey guys, how you doing? It's James JT at the movies and I'm back with you today for something completely different to pretty much anything I've ever done on this channel before. And, and this one might not be for everybody, but I hope you enjoy it if you watch it. I'm going to take you through my guitar and bass collection today. As folks who know me well on this platform will know, I'm a really keen musician. I play in a band and I've had an album out and a small UK tour and, and, and had a lot of fun with it and still am having a lot of fun with it as well. But I know that there's a few like-minded people in the in the YouTube movie community, and obviously there's guitar communities and things that I uh, that I watch a lot of videos as well, and I see a lot of collection videos like this. And I thought, Do you know what, I'll show you mine. So I'm sat in the in the studio where we recorded the This Too Shall Pass album for Leaving Overmorrow, uh, and that's where all my guitars are here. So I'm going to break it down into four sections today. That's going to be electric guitars, bass guitars, acoustic guitars, and then my like ukulele and banjo and mandolin and etc um, and I'll, I'll show you all that at the end I've got a uh, just sort of off left behind I've got a uh, got a decent stage keyboard and a, and a digital piano that I use for tracking things like that and whilst I can play the drums I don't currently own a drum set and if I need to put any drums on anything I either use a cajon or I do midi percussion uh, just in case anybody was wondering there's going to be a lot of jump cuts in this video I'm going to show you them and, and tell you stories about the guitars um, and I'll obviously give them a little bit of a strum I'm not going to plug any of the electrics in and do like clean and distorted takes and things like that it's not going to be that kind of video I just want to show you the guitars and maybe tell you some of the some of the brief stories about their journey with me because some of these I've had for a for a very long time. So with all that being said, I think we're going to start off with the electric guitar. So let's jump into that. So first things first, then we'll pick this one up here, and this is a 2010 vintage GT100, which is vintage brand uh, guitar, and it's their take on a Les Paul gold top. This has got Wilkinson P90 um, pickups in it, and I used to use this when I played lead guitar for a, for a covers band about 10, 12 years ago called The Sonic. And I use this if ever I'm recording anything and I want a bit of a sort of a smooth, almost jazz-like tone. Um, and also this does quite well, as, as folks who on, on this channel know me, um, I'm a huge Fleetwood Mac fan. And if ever I'm sort of recording anything and if I'm doing like a cover of a Fleetwood Mac song or if I'm recording something and I want to get a, a Lindsay Buckingham-esque tone, uh, this guitar, when it's in the in the neck pickup, does a pretty good job of sort of emulating that, uh, or at least to my ear it does anyway. So yeah, this is my uh, vintage GT Gold Top 100. So the next one that I want to show you is a Hondo 2. Les Paul Jr. Now this is a lawsuit guitar and what I mean by that is that it is the exact shape and specifications of a Gibson Les Paul uh, which is what this guitar is modelled after and the reason they call it a lawsuit model is because until I think the mid 80s there was no sort of definitive law in place shall we say to stop copyright infringement from happening and so a lot of companies in Japan and China and in Europe were copying these really expensive guitars and then selling them for a fraction of the price. Now, I have no idea what this would have gone for back in the day. Um, I rescued this from a cash converters um, because they had it in there for 30 quid. And I just thought, well, that's a, you know, it's a vintage guitar and it needs to, uh, needs to see a proper home. This, this has a really quirky sound when it's plugged in. Um, and to be right honest, is the only guitar in the collection that I'm possibly thinking about getting rid of, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in the fullness of time with this. Uh, when I played in a band called Vital Beat for, a, for about a year or so, um, I used this guitar because the, the pickup in the bridge has a really, really high output, um, and we were just a three-piece, and it, and it did well for a few of the tracks that we did where we really needed to sort of blow the roof off it. Um, and interestingly, when it's clean, this guitar sounds almost like it's been run through an acoustic simulator or something like that. So a really, really sort of quirky sound on it. Speaking of my old band, Vital Beat, when we were very much in our infancy, um, we, we decided that we wanted to have like a bit of a bit of an aesthetic on stage. Um, you know, and some, some bands will, you know, wear suits or they'll have a dress code or they'll do the hair a certain way or they'll all wear hats or 
whatever. And we, we decided um, that we wanted to have uh, a blue theme. The drummer, uh, before she traded up her kit and got a really nice, I think it was a pearl kit that she got, uh, but before she traded up her kit, um, she had a blue drum kit and the bass guitarist had a blue bass as his backup bass. So I went and bought this Epiphone Les Paul SL. Now this is the only official Les Paul that I have in my collection. And this guitar cost me £85 new. That wasn't on sale. This was uh, released by Epiphone. I don't think they make them anymore, but it was released by Epiphone to compete with the likes of the Squire Bullet line. Um, and one of the lads who was playing with us in that group, Vital Beat, for, for a while before he stepped down because uh, he didn't didn't sort of want to, to do what we were what we were doing with the music um, had one of these but in yellow and I absolutely just just fell in love with it and then when we decided we were going to do this sort of blue thing um, I stumbled into Dawson's music when they were still about and this was like I say it was £85 and, uh, and so I picked it up it's incredibly trebly it's um, incredibly shrill um, the tuning pegs on it I had to replace because the ones that were on it, you know, for an £85 guitar, you can imagine how stable they were. But I put a set of Wilkinsons on them that cost me about 35 quid, uh, so they're almost half the price of the guitar. Um, but it's much better now. Um, I use this if I ever want to do anything sort of recording wise, sliding, because the action, and I can adjust it if I wanted to, but because it works perfectly for slide, I keep it like it is. But the action's incredibly high, so I can do, you know, bits of slide on it and things like that. So, um, yeah, so that's what I, what I do with this one as well. Occasionally, Phil, who's in, in my band, likes to uh, to borrow this when we're, we're out and about gigging as well. So the next one is my Epiphone SG Special 2. I got this for my 14th birthday. Um, and this is, I would say this is my first proper electric guitar. I have my first electric guitar I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but um, but this was my, my first proper electric guitar. This is the one that I started gigging with. Um, and I was in a band called Fretbuzz for, for many, many years. We, we did that on and off for about 10 years and sort of wrapped it up around 2017. Um, and it was, it was where I met Phil. That was the first band we were in together and we were in with a great lad called Sam, who I'm still really good friends with to this day. Um, and I've done musical things with him, which if you go back far enough on this channel, right before it was a movie channel, there's still a couple of videos where Phil and Sam are in playing as fret buzz with me, so you'd be able to, to scope them out. But yeah, this thing has seen me through many an open mic night, many a gig, many a jam night, you know, sort of opening for bands and things like that and playing, you know, multi-band nights and whatever else. And, and I wrote a lot of the first songs I ever wrote on this guitar. And it was it was really inspired by a love for The Who, which I still have to this day. Um, and anybody who knows The Who's history will know that Pete Townsend played a Gibson SG in the, in the 1960s and in particular at Live at Leeds and at the Isle of Wight Festival. And I couldn't afford the, the real thing at the time, but £150, I saved up my birthday money and, you know, bits of pocket money that my mum and dad and my grandma and my nan and granddad had give me and, and I was able to buy this. Until last year when I stepped down from the rock band I was with, blatantly obvious, this was still in semi-regular rotation. Um, I've not done anything to it, it is all stock. Um, in fact, the only thing I've done is put new tone covers on it because they got cracked, um, did the, the two that were there. Uh, but all the pops, the switches, the pickups are still there. I never play this in the neck, I always play it in the bridge if ever I play it. Um, and yeah, it's just, just a good little workhorse is this. Horribly out of tune though. This is my most recent electric guitar purchase and this is a Silverline guitar. Uh, it's inspired by the old sort of Silverlines and Dan Electros and catalogue guitars of the 1960s. This one is I think from I think it was manufactured in 2020. I bought this in 2022. I bought this last year and I bought this as a as a bit of a sort of cheer myself up because I was having a really rough time of things sort of thing. You know those impulse purchases that we all get where you're just browsing on the internet and then the next thing you know you've hit add to cart and there's, there's a guitar arriving the next day. This is very similar in terms of sound and feel to a Fender Telecaster. 
Um, uh, it's got the lipstick pickups in it that are, that are incredibly bright without being shrill. And then it's got the, the selector, which is incredibly well made, and the, the knobs, and the knobs have multi features in, in terms of like volume and different bits of tone. And I use this in Blatantly Obvious. Um, it served really well as a rhythm guitar, which is the, the space I occupied in the band. Uh, and I have been known to use this as well in leaving over my to play the occasional bits of sort of shimmery, electric -y lead guitar bits that we do on songs like when we cover Lion Eyes or uh, when we do our song The Hill. So the next one to show you is one that I absolutely adore, though I'll be honest, it doesn't get played anywhere near as much as it used to do. Uh, and I really should uh, get more use out of it because the tone is fantastic on it. This is a cheap Japanese guitar. It's a copy of a Fender Stratocaster and the model is Vantage. Now I picked this up at a guitar shop about 15 years ago for 50 quid and it was in a, in a sort of like a, a spares and repairs pile. Um, and the guy said that it wasn't working and was, the, you know, basically just sort of fit for spare parts really, which anybody who knows just a little bit about repairing guitars, there's always something you can do to get them working again. So I, I don't profess to be particularly good at setting up guitars, I can just about get away with getting an electric where it needs to be, but acoustics is it's wizardry, is that sort of stuff, and I'll come on to that when I get to my acoustic guitar section. But yeah, this, this guitar uh, is humbucker, single coil, single coil, again it's all stock apart from new tone dial covers on there and a new pit guard i put this pit guard on it it had a black one on it but i wanted to just sort of jazz it up a little bit um, and i quite like the sort of the red tortoise shell effect uh this is a really really high output guitar and again it's really sort of trebly without being without being shrill um uh, and again when i played in the sonic when we used to do songs like she sells sanctuary i would play it on this guitar because the output was fantastic and the tone when you whack a bit of chorus and delay on this was just absolutely fantastic i haven't used it in a live setting for a while but i quite often tune this down to d standard and use it to put like additional layers on recordings and things like that but yeah my vantage strap so i promised i would show it my first ever electric guitar is uh, an axle an axl whatever you want to call it fender stratocaster copy um and i got this for my 11th birthday uh from my nan and granddad and I, I couldn't part with this thing if I wanted to. Um, it doesn't really have much of a, an application live um, anymore. I put a, a Fender, uh, yeah, I put a Fender Texas Special. I was tripping over my words then. Uh, pick up in Bridge, um, and then the other two pickups are the stock um, sort of designed by EMG pickups that are in it, and and they weren't they weren't too bad. Five way selector and everything else on it is literally stock. The only thing I've ever had to do with this um, electronics wise is replace the wire that went basically from all the circuitry into the output jack because it fractured. Um, but the the input jack's the same, the switch is the same. These two pickups are stock. This one's there. So what I've done with this, like I say, I. I couldn't bear to part with it, even you know, e even if I wanted to, because uh, it holds just such sentimental value for me. Is after seeing a video here on YouTube and becoming very inspired, uh, I decided that I would string it Nashville style, and I've done this with one of my acoustics as well, so I'll show you that later. But for anybody who doesn't know what I mean by that, it's uh, high strung tuning, and it's basically every other string of a twelve string, so you get this really sort of nice, bright, shimmery sound that's a lot higher than you know a regular guitar so it's like say every other string of a 12 string but then if you if you're playing things and doing things in a studio setting which i've just done recently with leaving over tomorrow's next single you can do really clever things with like recording tracks like this and then sort of panning them left and right and doing all sorts of fancy things that make it sound like you've got so much more going on on the track than you have but uh famously tom petty's free falling was recorded um it using this tuning so you have the so you get the idea but yeah this is my first ever guitar my first ever electric guitar that is the uh, the axel axl strap this next one is very much my baby um this is a squire classic vibe 50s inspired telecaster 
and for many years this was my main gigging guitar when I was in fretbows um, and I, I still regularly bring this guitar out today everything I ever record this is always on there um, you might remember I did a cover of Take It Easy by the Eagles about a year ago this is the guitar that I did the lead work on for that and uh, I've used it on other other covers and things like that that I've done on the on the channel as well and uh, it's on the This Too Shall Pass album and it's on the Fret Buzz album that we did when we were kids and uh, yeah I just absolutely love it. Um, I've got a Fender Telecaster which I'm going to show you momentarily and this thing is probably about £200 cheaper than the Fender Telecaster or at least it was at the time and uh, it gives it a run for its money if not beating it in some aspects as well it's just got that real sort of nice bite and bark that you want from a telecaster it twangs when it needs to it pops when it needs to it can rock it can country it can you know do pretty much anything you want it to um the only thing i've done to this is stuck some stickers on it our sticker the who and then as i've gone on about before we met stephen page the former lead singer of bare naked ladies uh we sang with him and um he he was selling stickers on his merch stand so i bought one of them and stuck that on there the only other thing i've done to it is put strap lockers on it um and then this is a strap that my mum my and her husband got me um that i've put on there that's been on there since they gave it to me as a as a gift for for playing with my band at their wedding and uh, that's been on there ever since so yeah um my uh, squire telecaster so here's the fender telecaster that i was telling you about and when I was playing in that band Vital Beat that I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, this was my main guitar. Um, and I, I would I would use this when we played songs like Dakota and uh, Little Lies by Fleetwood Mac. And um, we do um, Take Your Mama Out by the Scissor Sisters using this guitar. And this guitar is... It's just a classic Fender Telecaster. It's a Mexican one, and the the sound you get out of it is that you would expect out of a Telecaster. It is a little bit more mid heavy, is this guitar than the Squire one that I showed you. And if you've not guessed from some of the commentary I've given about the other guitars, I really like trebly electric guitars, and this one's just got a bit more mid about it, um, and doesn't always quite cut through with the um, with that with that treble side of things. It's all stock again, uh, and it's a 2014 model. Is this uh, the colour is midnight wine purple? Um, it often shows like it's black in a lot of lights, and I'm not sure how it's coming across in this video, uh, but it is definitely a, a sort of a dark um, and very deep sort of purple. Uh, last year, Laura bought me this lovely leather strap to put on it, so that uh, that matches it. Um, it's got really great action. Horribly out of tune, just like the other ones. You'd think I'd tune these up before showing you them. Um, but uh, obviously with the electric ones, you don't really get the, the feel for how they sound. But yeah, um, great guitar. I love this one. And then penultimately, this is my favourite electric guitar, is this. I, I rescued this from a, from a trade-in and pawn shop. Um, this is a Fender Stratocaster. It's a 2004 Mexican Standard model. Originally, um, this was Sunburst, um, and uh, it was the you know the, the vintage tobacco Sunburst um, that that you see the you know the classic Buddy Holly one, and and this was one hundred and forty pounds in the shop because somebody had as you, you can possibly see here if I sort of show you there somebody had taken a chisel to this to chip all the paint off of it. So electronically, everything's stock as far as I'm aware. It's stock at least as I bought it. Um, and it was all in good working order. The neck's great, the tuners are great. Um, you know, it plays like and sounds like an absolute dream. But basically what I did is I took this guitar to bits and I, I didn't want to lose the character of it. It was in a state when I bought it, somebody done a real hack job pun intended uh, of taking the uh, taking the finish off it and I'm not entirely sure what their end goal was but I, I, I didn't want to take away the guitar story but I had to get it looking better than it was so I took it to bits and I gave it a right good sanding down and then I, um, I gave it just one coat of lacquer just to seal it in um, and then it is as as you see it uh, and it's a workhorse is this thing I, I used this for for many years in my band blatantly obvious that I, I was in up until last year and then um, 
in, uh, in in various different studio applications this gets used i've used this in covers that i've done on the on the channel here that you can view it definitely got used in the in the this too shall pass album this guitar was um one of the trio of guitars to do the solo on phil's song little fish i absolutely adore this guitar so this is my last electric guitar to show you and this one is a very special one to me though it's also a very very troublesome guitar. So this is a Gretsch Streamliner 2655, I think it is. Something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a mid-range Gretsch guitar. And this is one of two guitars that I treated myself to uh, when my, my dad passed away and he, he left me and my sister some money um, behind. And he was a really big supporter of my, my musical journey. And... Um, uh, the, you know, I'd always really wanted a Gretsch guitar and uh, I saw this one and, you know, I really like this sort of uh, semi-hollow sort of shape and the cutaways and the, the F-holes like you'd see on, you know, some bigger jazz guitars and violins and things like that. And so I bought this guitar uh, and no sooner had I bought it after about a week of having it, it just wouldn't stay in tune. Um, and I mean, there was nothing I could do. I had it to people. Um, and it even got to the point where I, I was basically told, well, if it's sentimental to you, you've got yourself a nice wall ornament. And um, I, uh, I then sort of um, resigned myself to that fact and then, then got connected again with an old school friend, a lad called Josh, who is a phenomenal guitarist um, and an even better guitar technician. Um, and does it, you know, for a living and restores and repairs and, and maintains guitars from from all backgrounds and, and sort of, you know, sort of states of condition. So I took this to him, almost not expecting him to be able to do anything and him to tell me that, nah, it's you know, you, you've, you've picked a dud sort of thing. But he was able to bring this back to life for me. Um, and I was able to actually use this guitar when I when I played a gig at uh, Donington Park where the whole download festival they were doing a, a motorbiking and trucking festival down there and we got to play on a, a great huge stage to a massive crowd and play you know some sort of old rock and roll standards and things like that and it's, it's got a great sustain as this guitar and um, you know sort of obviously being semi-acoustic sort of thing it's um, it's great for just sort of picking about and it's got a got a really nice tone to it when you when you plug it in because it's rather flexible. You probably maybe can't hear that without it being plugged in, uh, but with me being a bigger chap and sort of having a bit of weight on the guitar, I can sometimes bend it in and out of tune, flat or sharp slightly, uh, depending on which way you know if I push it forward or sort of pull it back to me or whatever. Uh, and so I don't gig it all that often for that reason of I really like the, the sturdiness of a Strat and the Tele that you can, you know, throw them up in the air and catch them and they'll still be in tune. Whereas this thing, I only need to... And you can sort of hear that, that bend there sort of thing. But it's got a really nice tone to it. Sounds great plugged in. It's a real, real workhorse guitar. And for, for really obvious sentimental reasons, it means the world to me. And so now we move into the bass guitar section and I'm gonna show you a guitar that is incredibly important to me. This bass guitar is a Squire 20th anniversary P bass guitar. Again, it's all stock. Um, the only thing I've changed on it is I've put a Fender Strat volume knob, which is actually from that Vantage Strat that I showed you before that's just here. And then uh, a random dial there when the tone dials sort of have been lost over the years. And then there's a new and improved sticker there, which, believe it or not, is off a pair of jeans. But I saw it, stuck it to the guitar, and that's where it's been. This guitar is my first bass guitar. It's the one that I learned to play bass on. And it's incredibly important to me because my, my late Nana bought me this guitar. Um, though I didn't realise that's what she was doing at the time. I, I knew I wanted a bass, uh, played guitar for a couple of years and was you know reasonably good at it, but was getting into songwriting and I had a band and the guy in the band that was playing the bass was a really good bass player, um, but we were wasting too much time, me working out bass lines for him on a guitar and doing whatever else. And I really wanted to get a bass so that I could, you know, sort of learn to play it a bit, you know, a bit more fluently and, and be able to sort of communicate easier with the bass player. So I started sort of uh, saving up, shall we say, with me, with me nan and, you know, I'd, um, 
I'd get a five as pocket money off my mum and dad and then the say off me off my grandma, my dad's mum. And and I'd I'd give me nan like a couple of quid out of that every every week. Um and she'd she'd be like saving it up or whatever. And um she'd be like, Oh well, you know, if I if I have a bit of change in my purse, I'll I'll round it up for you and whatever else. And she was just the absolute best. And then before you knew it, I had fifty or sixty quid in this pot that I'd definitely not saved and my nan had obviously just put, you know, um put a wedge of cash in there for me bless her and um my granddad found this in the in the paper uh in the in the classifieds you know way back when we had before we had things like facebook marketplace and ebay and whatever else and it was a chap selling this guitar um and it was 50 or 60 quid i can't remember what it was um and we went and bought it and i you know just picked it up and didn't really know what i were doing with it and just went yeah i love it that's fine um and then brought it and it's it's just a great bass um i use it when i record quite regularly um it's the strings on it are, are a few years old now and they've got that sort of mellow sort of dull thud that any real bass player is probably going to tell me off for not changing the strings but uh, but i sort of like it um bass heroes of mine are john entwistle john mcvee um bruce foxton and you know bruce foxton in particular um you know really cut his teeth playing you know these sort of things you know Oh, you know. You know, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, M whistle, you know. All that sort of stuff for like, won't get fooled again. And, uh, and, and I learned how to do that on this guitar. And, like I say, with, with Nana not being about anymore, and my Nana and Granddad are going to be a, a recurring theme throughout this video. They're the biggest champions of, of my music, you know, I don't want to call it a career, but, you know, my, my musical development, shall we say. Um, but yeah, this, this means the absolute world to me, does this bass guitar. And so on to the next bass guitar. This was a charity shop rescue. Um, this is a PV milestone bass inspired by uh, Fender's jazz basses, at least with the pickups and the, the tone and, and volume configuration. Obviously, the uh, the shape is a little bit more um, sort of spiky and pointy. Uh, these were the bass guitars that we had in college when I uh, when I studied music at college. And I really loved the action of them and the tone and, and everything. And then it was literally like a Christmas miracle almost. It was Christmas Eve. Um, we were on our way to my nan and granddad's because we always have Christmas Eve at their house. And we were driving past the charity shop that was closing. And this was stood in the window uh, for 40 quid. And um, my mum and her husband were running us about. And I had that literally, I had miles almost slam on and was like, oh my God. Uh, and I knew that it was a PV base just from the outline of it and had to go and get it and I absolutely love it. Currently it's out of action. Something in the electrics has failed uh, and I've tried repairing it and not got anywhere fast. Um, my friend Louise has had a go, Phil's missus, um, and she's not been able to fix it either. So the lad Josh, who I took the Gretsch to, is going to have a look at this for me at some point. But it's a great little bit of kit, is this, you know. Uh, and I can't wait to get it back into some sort of action. But yeah, absolutely plays brilliantly unplugged and I just can't wait to uh, to get using it again. So, my last bass guitar. Um, and this one I bought off my, my former bandmate, Zach. We were in a band called Blake and the Obvious together and he was also the bass player in Vital Beat as well uh, before we went on to form Blake and the Obvious um, a while later. Uh, and he bought this guitar off Facebook Marketplace for 50 quid and played it for a bit. Um, and I fell in love with this guitar when he bought it. I was there the night that he picked it up. Um, he'd been to pick it up and then we, we both went to band practice. Um, and I think I sat and played this thing more than he did that night. And I, and I said to him, if ever you're letting that bass go, I want first refusal on it anyway. Flash forward to last year. Uh, and it was the same week that I bought the silver tone guitar that I showed you earlier. Um, he says, I'm, I'm moving out, mate. I'm, I'm you know trying to get a bit of cash together and you know and also freeing up some space that base is going to go on on facebook and unless you want it so he let me have it for the 50 quid that he bought it for so yeah i, uh, I absolutely had to have it off him um i use this base to record all the bass lines on the, on my songs at least for the this two shall pass album um and and most of uh, most of rubens and laura's as well i think phil used his ibanez bass that he's got um but it's 
obviously a copy of a Music Man uh, base, but it's the brand is Stag. Uh, we stuck our sticker there over the Stag logo. Nothing against Stag, it's just where the sticker ended up. It would have ended up there if um, at the top of the headstock if there'd been room. But again, great action to it. And a great tone, especially when plugged in and you know, sort of even mic'd up into the into the you know into the computer and whatever else for, for when we're recording. I have a lot of fun playing bass. Uh, I've never actually played bass guitar in a band, um, and it's uh, it's one of my uh, my sort of musical bucket list things to do. Is that and me and Phil are maybe on about doing some uh, doing some shows next year with a drummer. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the music will be yet, but where he takes lead guitar because currently he's our percussionist and he's a phenomenal lead guitar player. Um, and I like to think I'm reasonably decent when I get going on the bass. And we've never played in that configuration before, so we're thinking about having a Having a go at that and seeing how we how we get on, and I'll probably use this thing if I do. Uh, but yeah, this is my uh, my Stag uh, Music Man copy. So I feel like every guitar collection has one dud that, for whatever reason, guitarists and bassists just keep around. Probably more for sentimental reasons and for you know sort of the the emotional value it has rather than than its usefulness. And this guitar is this collection's version of that. This is a Swift acoustic bass that I bought brand new from eBay uh, around 2009 for the grand total of 40 pounds. So you can imagine an acoustic bass guitar or any guitar for that matter for the, for the price of 40 pounds, how great that's gonna be. This thing is absolute trash. And the reason we bought it is because the band Fret Buzz that I was with at the time, we were shooting some sort of promo videos when we were doing a series of acoustic gigs and the drummer uh, Sam uh, bought an acoustic guitar and was learning to play and he's a great little rhythm guitarist um, now and the lad Joe that was playing bass with us at the time um, didn't have an acoustic bass and was just playing his Fender P bass that he had uh, and we all agreed that it would look really cool if we were all on acoustic guitars for this video. Um, he wasn't bothered about spending the money on something that he wasn't going to play and, and we were just going to roll with the P bass thing and then I saw this on eBay and I thought, do you know what? For the sake of a few videos, it'll do. Um, but this has, has regularly come along to open mic nights and things like that that I've been either helped run or that I've you know, been a regular attendee at and things like that. Uh, Laura is is learning to play the bass and he's on a, on a slow but steady journey with that and I quite often sit and teach her with this bass. Um, it's not the most comfortable thing to play. I've never changed the strings on it in all that time that I've had it because honestly a, a new set of acoustic bass strings would probably cost more than the thing uh, you know, um, cost me in the first place, but it, you know, it does what it does. So the first acoustic guitar that I want to show you was a gift from my grandparents for my 15th or 16th birthday. Um, this is an Epiphone 12 string from around 1995. It's a fully acoustic 12 string at the moment. I am later uh, this month going to have a pickup fit in this so that I can start using it again in a different tuning live. Um, this was a limited edition model from the research that I've been able to do. Um, and I, I think they only ran this particular model for a, for a year or so and there was only, I don't know, you know, a few thousand of them made or whatever uh, across the thing. I, I don't really see them coming up on the on the second hand market. I don't think it's a particularly expensive guitar. I think it was probably, you know, maybe two, three, four hundred pounds back in the day. But it's got a really nice tone to it. Probably helped if I tuned it uh, before I started playing it, but you get the idea. These strings have been on here, I'm ashamed to say, for probably about five years at this point. So it's desperately due uh, a restring and a good old clean up. And when I have the electronics fitted into it, um, that is exactly what it's going to get. And my good mate Josh that I mentioned before that fixed the, the Gretsch for me, he's going to take care of that and sort that. And speaking of him, so as I said, speaking of Josh, he has recently just repaired and restored... Um, and fit electronics to this guitar, which is a either late 60s or early 1970s Echo Ranger Model 6. Uh, this guitar was my granddad Terry's back in the back in the 1970s. He bought it 
um, out of a catalogue and it was a little bit dinged up when it arrived and in particular the back of it, I don't know if it shows on the video there, but the back of it was all sort of damaged and he decided that he'd keep it because they, they offered him like half price rather than the, the full retail and because it didn't affect the playability. He did that and then for, for many years he, he used this, this was his guitar and then he gave it to my uncle who was uh, trying to learn to play at the time um, plays a little bit, but doesn't doesn't do much with it. And then for for many years again, it sat in my aunt and uncle's wardrobe uh, until my uncle gave it back to my granddad. At which point, I'd taken an interest in learning the guitar and was learning to play on a little um, sort of you know really hard to play flimsy acoustic guitar that again my nan and granddad had got me, which I don't have anymore. Um, and it was one of those things where the, the strings were about, you know, this much off the fret and it was like, you know, easier to grate cheese on the thing than it would have been to play it. Um, but yeah, this is what I consider to be my first proper guitar, my first, you know, my, my real first guitar. Um, and for a long time, this guitar has struggled with its intonation and it's not been able to be tuned. And uh, again, until it had the electronics put in it, I had no sort of way to use it live. And so this has just been a studio beast for for many years. And a lot of the rhythm tracks in the backgrounds of, of the songs that we've done, I've you know, managed to tune it in so I could play and then do whatever. But I'd, I'd had a bit of money saved up and I decided that this guitar needed to come back to life because it means so much to me. So I took it to Josh um, and he has put the pickup in it when he actually um, took it apart to put the pickups in it the, the thing fell to bits so he's had to glue bits back together and re-screw and he's realigned the neck for the first time I think in its entire life it's got a new saddle in the bridge and it's had some work done inside to compensate for you know the natural effects of aging and it's honestly playing the best that it ever has and it's absolutely got a gorgeous ring to it you know just a So yeah, I only got this back from him a couple of days ago, um, and I've I've only used it live uh, once since I took it to an open mic night and jammed with it, and it was it was really quite alien because I'm, I'm obviously not used to using it in that setting, and it felt weird playing songs that are part of my regular repertoire now, but on a guitar that you know hasn't been my main guitar for 20 years at this point. But it, it's lovely. Um, I can't put into words um, how amazing it is to have this this back in you know it in probably the best condition it's ever been in. So this is my most recent acoustic acquisition. I bought this for my 30th birthday last year. Um, saved up my, my pennies for it. And uh, I, I wanted a plug-in Electro 12 string um, that I could use for gigging. And I wanted a really sort of high quality one that was gonna last me forever. And when I, when I sort of, you know, tripped and fell into the shop where they were selling expensive 12 string guitars, this was the one that sort of just went on and called me to it, and uh, it was like the you know the, the the scene out of Wayne's World. Can I can I put the guitar back? No, is cash okay? You know, um, and I absolutely fell in love with this guitar. Now it's had a bit of an interesting journey, um, and that that's definitely for sure. Um, when I, when I bought it, it, it settled as as you know acoustic guitars and and, and wood does, um, and the neck sort of bowed a little bit, and the action sort of went sky high and it almost became impossible to play so I had it back into the guys that I bought it from who are, are also tailor um sort of you know authorized you know repair people if you like um and they put it back to factory settings um and it played great again but it was still just a hair too high for me uh was the action so again I had this into Josh um and he's done uh, a new shim in the neck because um, for anybody who doesn't know tailors are actually uh, guitars that you can dismantle uh, they are very cleverly built to look like they're all fused together but you can actually get under here and the screws and the neck will come off and they've got shims that you can put in to adjust the neck angle so he's put new shims in it he's also sanded down the saddle uh, which is the the white bit here for anybody that doesn't know that holds the strings on the bridge of the guitar the uh, the dark wood bit here and that's meant that the action is much lower and much more comfortable to play and it also gives the guitar now a really nice sustain and a ring to it which it just it was almost sort of strangling itself before because the action was so so stiff and so high on it but it's just got such a great sound and <laughs>
My camera died on me halfway through. Ah, well, not the end of the world. Anyway, folks, I lied. This is my most recent guitar, but it's not one that I purchased. So I was technically right when I said that the Taylor was the last one that I bought. This is a Takamine, Takamine, however you say it, G Series 50th anniversary model. Um, this is the sort of the, the affordable one, as it were, that was at uh, about 500 pounds. And this used to be my granddad Terry's. Uh, and granddad's still with us, don't worry. Um, but he's he's not um, he's not not really a well man anymore. Um, and unfortunately, he's, he's no longer able to play guitar like he once was. And he bought this guitar when he gave me a guitar that I'm going to show you last for my 18th birthday. Uh, he bought this guitar as a um, as a, as a replacement. Um, it was actually a second replacement because there's another guitar coming that I'm going to show you anyway. I'll get to that when I get to it, but he bought this guitar ultimately as a replacement guitar and then as he's as he's slowed down and as he's he's not able to play anymore now, he's just kept his Fender Strat that he has at home um, to uh, sort of plink plonk on when he, when he wants to. But at the beginning of this year, he says, James, the guitar's gathering dust and he says, I'd rather you were using it with the band and all the, the stuff that you're doing. So if you want it, you can have it. And of course, um, I love this guitar. I have gigged with it before when mine's been out of action. I've played it. When I've gone round to Nan and Grandad's house, and you know, it's a great guitar. There was no way I was going to say no. And, and Grandad, I don't think I've said it yet, but thank you so much for supporting me, you know, and Nana as well, God rest her, um, for as long as you both have um, and continue to do, and for all the wonderful opportunities that you've you've afforded me, um, you know, musically and otherwise as well. Uh, and these, you know, some of these guitars are just a, an extension of that. And, and thank you. But yeah, this guitar is is great. I've been using it a lot lately. Um, I found that the action is quite low, but it's still a little... Um, I don't want to say hard to play, because it's not, but I found that whereas I normally play 11-gauge strings on an acoustic, this suits 10s better and feels a lot easier and a lot nicer to play sort of underhand than, than 11s do, but it's got a really nice... <laughs> sort of sound to it. It's a little muffled because I've got a feedback guard in it at the minute because as I say I, I use this one quite a lot live at the moment. But yeah this is a Takamine 50th anniversary series. So the next one to show you is one by Crafter. Now I bought this off my good mate Aiden who is a singer songwriter and musician on the on the local circuit. Uh, and he put this up on Facebook Marketplace in, in lockdown and uh, basically sort of said, it, you know, it cost me 200 quid. I just want rid of it. It's going for 40 quid. Anybody wants it, they can have it. Um, somebody did actually pick me to the post uh, and I commented on his post and said, oh, if I'd, have, if I'd have been a bit quicker on the draw, I'd have had that off you. And he, bless him, he sent me a private message, something along the lines of, well, if you want it, I don't think the other guy's going to come through on his offer, so just come and get it. Uh, and so I did literally just that, um, you know, all socially distanced as it were at the time sort of thing. But I uh, popped the cash on his step and he uh, he picked it up and popped the guitar on his step. And then I did that, you know, and it was all all sort of in, uh, in the guidelines. But I, I always wanted a Spanish acoustic guitar, you know, a, a nylon strung guitar. Um, and the fact that this is also an electro one, so I can plug in, I can record with it is brilliant as well and I mentioned earlier in this vlog that my Strat was um, one, uh, one third of the, the trio guitar solo on, on our original song Little Fish written by Phil. This was the other two sections of that on this uh, this guitar. But I, I love this guitar, it's got a great tone to it. And as I've mentioned maybe once or twice already in this vlog, I'm a huge Lindsay Buckingham fan, huge Fleetwood Mac fan. Uh, and to be, you know, have a nylon string guitar as well means that I can finally do this with some level of authenticity. If anybody doesn't know, that's the acoustic version of a uh, Fleetwood Mac track called Big Love, and it is ridiculously difficult to play. It's taken me years to be able to, to do that. Um, 
but yeah, this is just a great guitar to have. Um, definitely use it more in a studio environment than I would say a live environment. But it's it's a really good thing to sort of have in your arsenal where you can sort of like, you know, just, oh, this needs solo so I can just put something, you know, a bit uh, a bit different on it or whatever. And we've definitely used this, on, like I say, on the on the album and recordings that the band's done. So the next one to show you is another Takamini G series. This is one that my nan and granddad gave me for my 21st birthday. Um, again, this was the one I was kind of mentioning earlier when the, the guitar I'm going to show you last, when my nan and granddad gave me that for my 18th birthday. This was the one that my granddad went out and initially bought to replace it. Uh, but he then decided when the 50th anniversary one came out, which is just here, uh, that he wanted that one as well. And unlike me, my granddad does not have a music shop's worth of guitars. Um, he is very much a one-in, one-out kind of guy. Uh, and you know what? That's absolutely fair enough. But um, like I say, when, when they did that, they gave me this one then for my, my 21st birthday. Um, and this was my sort of secondary um, guitar live for many years when I do acoustic shows. Um, and you know, it was often the one that I would put into like Dad Guard or D Stander or Open G or whatever if I was going to muck around with things and and whatever else. And it's just a great little workhorse of a guitar. As I've acquired more guitars and you know, sort of done different things over the years, this guitar does still find its way into rotation. But it's currently strung like my uh, my Green Strat that I showed you earlier in Nashville tuning. Um, and we've used this on the the Leaving Over Morrow's latest single. <laughs> But again, you know, if it, if it wasn't sort of clear when I showed you before, the, the Tom Petty thing with the free falling, you know. <laughs> Obviously, properly in tune. Um, but yeah, just this is really good in a studio environment. I don't know that I'd necessarily play this live, um, you know, at least strung like this, but it's really great to sort of add, like say, just ethereal and sort of, you know, interesting sounding sort of panned tracks but yeah i love this guitar easy to play uh when i was doing the band blatantly obvious for a while i had it tuned down to to d standard that we used to play in and he used to do things like pinball wizard on that guitar and uh, it was just great fun so the penultimate guitar folks um i'm gonna show you my uh, my ukuleles and banjos and things like that afterwards but um the 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 penultimate uh, the penultimate guitar uh, is this one and I mentioned earlier when I showed you the Gretsch um, that when my dad passed away, he, he left me and my sister some money. And I knew that, I, you know, obviously having such a love for guitars as I do, I knew I wanted to buy um, a guitar to, you know, remember him by. I ended up buying two. This was the, the second of the of the two. Um, and, and, I, and I just, I wanted a really, really nice um, acoustic uh, that was different to what I had um but was something that i knew I'd, I'd want to keep forever and that would you know sort of get better with age and you know it it was access to you know the sort of disposable money that you don't have in sort of day to day um sort of thing and um you know it would, it would have taken me an age to save up for this guitar um but yeah when I, whenever i play this guitar you know i, I you know I feel like he's with me uh, and this is a Gibson G45 studio model this is a Gibson generation guitar it's based on the J45 model I believe it's full scale length but the body is if you can just see it there slightly shallower and with it being the studio model it um, is um, basically no frills you just sort of get the you know the basics of it but it's got grover tuners on it it's got the gibson you know bits and bobs on it uh it's american made as well um and it just sounds divine does this guitar <laughs> Um, and this has got a really nice sort of warm sound to it. Uh, and my Takamini guitars, that are, I would say my main acoustic guitars, are quite shimmery, quite bright, um, 
quite treble heavy, which I like. But this is, um, like I say, it, it's very sort of mid, mid sort of sounding. It's got quite a bit of a bass stud to it. And so it, it occupies a different space to the other ones. And I find that this one really works quite well for if I want to play things by like The Who and Pete Townsend, obviously a huge influence of mine. Um, but you know, things like Pinball Wizard on this sound amazing. <laughs> And it sounds great finger picked as well, you know. I'd have been better if I'd have probably tuned it in a bit better, wouldn't I? But uh, that's, that's the running theme of this video, isn't it, folks? You can tell that I'm a I'm a movie YouTuber and not a guitar in YouTube. But yeah, I absolutely adore this guitar, and thank you very much, Dad. So here we are with the final guitar, folks, and I've uh, I've decided that I'm actually gonna. Uh, just quickly before I talk about this guitar, I'll show you my mandolin, which is here, and it's just a, a no-name, sort of cheap mandolin. Um, my granddad got it with the intention of learning when he retired and then decided that it wasn't for him. And then my ukulele is here, and it's a Tanglewood electroacoustic one. I also have an Ashbury one um, and a Les Paul-inspired one as well, but they're, they're not where I thought they were. They're not, not to hand. And my banjo, I've actually lent it to a friend, so uh, I thought I had it to show you. Um, but I don't really play those instruments anywhere near as much as I play all of the ones I've shown you here today. So it's not not to worry. Uh, but this is my main guitar. This is a, a Takamine made in Japan. I'm unsure of the model number. It's got the feedback guard in it, so I'm not going to check. This is the one that my granddad bought, um, and this was... Um, you know, one that he, he bought because it was a fantastic deal. Um, there was a shop uh, near where he used to work and they had this in the window and I think it started um, life around maybe, I don't know, over a thousand pounds anyway, um, did this guitar. Um, and then they were taking something like 50 quid off it every day or or whatever it was until somebody bought it. Anyway, it got down to about six or seven hundred pounds and that's when Grandad caved and uh, and bought it. And it is by far the best six-string acoustic guitar I have ever played um, and, and ever will play. Uh, and you know when you just have a have a connection with, with an instrument, and, and I would say I have a connection with, with you know, most of these guitars um, on, on some sort of uh, you know sentimental and emotional level, but this one is just... I can't put into words how much this guitar means to me. It's, you know... Uh, God forbid it ever happens, but it's sort of run and save it in a fire kind of territory, you know, um, and, you know, who knows what will happen with these, um, you know, through the, the fullness of time, you know, I, I'd like to keep hold of them all for now, but, you know, I, I may well sell and, you know, gift to eventual children and, and whatever else, you, you know, I might do with them over, over the years, but this guitar will, will never leave me. It's, it's just great fun. It needs restringing. Um, it's just done a number of gigs um, and again I've got it out of the, the case and not tuned it there we go I've tuned it now I'll, uh, I'll have cut that so you won't have seen me tuning it but yeah it's just and again with the, the pickup guard in it you don't get the full sound of the acoustic thing and it won't translate over video but this thing sounds gorgeous in any room that I play it in um, I'm plugged into just you know just about anything it sounds absolutely you know wonderful um, and I go through fits and starts of playing the Gibson as my main guitar or playing the, the 50th anniversary Takamine on Taylor or the other, you know, the the high strung Takamini when it's strung normally. But I always, always, always come back to this one. It's just, it's so comfortable. It, it just feels like an extension of me whenever I play it. And I think that's the the sign of any any good guitar um, and any guitar that you have a connection with. So there we are, folks. That has been my my guitar tour, my guitar collection video for 2023. I'm probably not going to do another one of these um, because I don't think I'm going to be picking any more guitars up. He says. Um, I've no no intention to. I've got I've got everything that I that I sort of need in the in the collection and want in the collection is probably a better way to say it. 
um, and I'm, I'm very, very lucky and very blessed to, to have access to all these instruments. If you've enjoyed the video, drop it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below with your thoughts. If there's anything you want to know about any of these guitars, I'll be, uh, be, be glad to try and answer any questions. If you're coming across my channel uh, for the first time, hello and nice to see you. I don't normally do videos like this. I'm normally a DVD and Blu-ray collector, and, and they normally talk about my love for physical media um, and my love for movies. That's normally what this channel is about. And if that sounds like it's something that might be your cup of tea, then please think about subscribing to the channel if you've enjoyed the video and you want to see what other things I get up to subscribe as well it'd be lovely to keep you around but folks I don't normally make videos talking about guitars and music so if you're looking for channels that do that I might not be the channel for you um, but thank you for watching anyway this is going to be an incredibly long vlog and I would imagine that only people that are interested in the subject matter will uh, will have watched it through so to those guys thank you very much and I, and I hope it's been been interesting listening to me waffle for all this time take care of yourselves folks and I'll see you again real soon Bye for now.